fourth graders. Okay, welcome back to part two. So now in the last lesson, we talked about um, fractions that have 10 or 100 as their denominator, and that was a big review. So now I want to talk about equivalents of fractions that have 10 and 100 as their denominator. Uh, again, this is going to be sort of a review, but it's going to be kind of like an aha moment for some of you, like a light bulb. So let's get to it. Okay, so here's what I've got. Right now, on my screen, above the line, I have two fraction models. One is in tenths. Oopsie, that's not what I want. One is in tenths, and the other one is in hundredths. They are equivalent. I know that they're equivalent because when I look at them, they have the same amount shaded, right? This has this much shaded, and so does this one. It has the exact amount shaded. It's just broken up differently. It's the same model, it's just broken up differently. So if I look at my uh, tenths, there's only one tens rod, right? But if I look at my hundreds, it's 10. So let's move below the line now. On this side, it's tenths, and on this side, it's hundredths. What do you notice? I see that I've got one, two rods, but I have 20 little cubes or little squares. What do you notice about that? Are you making a generalization between these two numbers and perhaps these two numbers? Let's keep going. So here I've got tenths and I've got hundredths. And over here I've got 10, 20, nope, whoopsie, one, two, three. But over here, I've got 10, 20, 30. Are you seeing it? Down here, I've got four, one, two, three, four tenths. And I have 10, 20, 30, 40 hundredths. Do you see it? Here, I have five, whoopsie, I have five tenths and I have 50 hundredths. These are equivalent. They represent the same amount. All of them do so far. They are equivalent. What do I have down here? Looks like one, two, three, four, five, six tenths, which means this is going to be 60 hundredths. Wonder how I knew that without counting. I see a pattern happening, something I can generalize. Those are equivalent. Here, I know that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tenths. And I know that that's going to be equivalent to 70 hundredths. Down here, I have eight tenths which will be equivalent to, say it with me, 80 hundredths. Are you seeing the same pattern for every single one of these? I am. This is gonna be nine tenths and 90 hundredths. Equivalent. And this is gonna be 10 tenths and 100 one hundredths equivalent. So take a look at those all for a second. I'm going to go back to the beginning. One tenth, ten hundredths. Two tenths, twenty hundredths. How about five tenths, fifty hundredths. I want to be really clear. There's a common misconception, like I've said before, where people think that, let's say, uh, three tenths is equivalent to three hundredths. That's not true, because that would look something maybe like this. We'll pretend those are shaded pieces, where this would just look like this. A lot less. 
This is 3 out of 100, which means those pieces are a lot smaller than 3 out of 10. We can also see these equivalencies on number lines. Now, making a number line that goes to 10 isn't too hard, but making a number line that shows 100 kind of is. If you look at my number line here, this is going to be 0 tenths, 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths, 6 tenths, 7 tenths, 8 tenths, 9 tenths, and you can't see it because it's behind here, 10 tenths. Now the bottom number line, it's not broken just into tenths. Now the tenths are there. You can see them, they line straight up. But um, this whole number line is broken into 100. If I counted all of these, um, there would be 100 tick marks. So this is 0 one hundredths. This is 1, sorry, 10 one hundredths. This is 20 one hundredths. Because if I counted, this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Whereas up here, since there's no tick marks in between, it's just the first jump, it's just one. So this would be 30 one hundredths, 40 one hundredths, 50 one hundredths, 60 hundredths, 70, oopsie, my pencil went crazy, 70 hundredths, 80 hundredths, 90 hundredths, and 100 hundredths. Maybe you can see that generalization that I was making before when I was talking about, are you guys noticing this pattern here that I'm seeing every single time? Maybe it's easier to see here because it lines up completely. But this number line essentially shows us that 6 tenths is equivalent to 60 hundredths. Let's look at another one like that. Well, if this is tenths, this is going to be 0 tenths, 1 tenth, 2 tenths. Whoopsie. 2 tenths. I could label the whole thing, but I don't need to because I only need to know up to there. So this is 0. Remember, the bottom one's out of 100 because if I count all those lines, which I don't want to, I don't need to, there are 100 of them. So this would be 10 and this would be 20. So we can see. 20 hundredths is equivalent to 2 tenths. Before we answer this question, I want to show you again. This would be 2 hundredths. This, I'm sorry, that would be 2 tenths. This would be 2 hundredths. There's a big difference between them. So that misconception that if they're both 2, then their equivalent is definitely wrong. You can see that they don't line up on the number line. They're only equivalent if they line up on the number line. Okay, so back to what is. What's equivalent to 8 tenths? So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 tenths would be right there. So what would this be? 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. So 8 tenths is equivalent to 80 hundredths. So what's equivalent to 40 hundredths? So this would be 10, 20, 30, 40. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 tenths is equivalent to 40 hundredths. I'm going to pause for one second. I'm going to tell you that your secret code word for this part of the slideshow is equivalence. If you need help spelling that, it's at the very, very beginning of this video on the title slide. Don't go there yet, but the word is equivalence. You'll need that when you get into the slideshow. All right, and I think this is our last one. So what's the same as one tenth? That would be ten hundredths. One tenth equals ten hundredths. Now, in part three, we're going to talk about that generalization, which you guys might be noticing about these equivalent fractions. But before we do that, I want you to go ahead into part two and I want you to watch, I'm sorry, not watch, do the slides for part two. 
where you're going to practice finding equivalent fractions. So you're going to have some slides that are really similar to these ones here from the beginning, where maybe you have a slide that looks like this and you have to find its partner that looks like this and then drag and drop it into the right spot. Okay. Um, okay. So off you go to do that and I will see you when you're done for part three.